Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Adolescence. Welcome back to another video. So we're in the middle of spring and I thought it might be a good idea to review what has quickly become one of my favorite spring fragrances. I'm excited to tell you more about it. This one is by the company Hermetica and the fragrance is called Green Lion. So make sure to stay tuned. So the perfumer for this one is Felipe Paparella Paris. He is a perfumer who used to work with Mann, but now he works with Simrise. He has done Noble Fig and Bright Neroli by Ferrari. He's also done Wolf Spain by Parfum Cortana, which happens to be one of their best releases from what I've been told. And here we have a creation for Hermetica. I believe this is the only one that he's done for this brand. And Hermetica is a sister company of Memo Paris. So you might be familiar with that company as well. Now this. This is a fragrance that I purchased a couple of months ago. I was actually at Perfumology and I wanted to buy a fragrance for myself and I figured, you know what, the weather's starting to get a little bit warmer out there and I almost purchased Vertical Oud, but I thought to myself, okay, I have a fragrance in my collection that's a little bit similar to it, so I didn't necessarily need Vertical Oud at the time, but I said this one is more season appropriate and it actually does contain a note that I'm a big fan of. It kind of has like this minty vibe it also has a note of basil and basil can also come across smelling a little bit mentholated or a little bit minty and so I have been wearing this one for the past couple of months. I haven't been wearing it every day of course just a little sprinkling here and there but um, it is one that I have been enjoying, enjoying this spring and I believe it's even one that I featured in my top 10 spring fragrances of 2020 niche edition list. So I'm excited to tell you more about the smell. Let's start with the presentation. So the box for this one is pretty cool. It's just this cylindrical tube. It's very flexible. It has this perforated feel to it. And then you also have a sticker at the bottom here, which you need to break in order to open up your box. The Hermetica logo may be located on the top of the bottle. And the bottom of the box has all your discerning information. The bottle for this fragrance also has a cylindrical shape and it's this dark green color with gold accents. The cap for this fragrance has a very loose fit. Please don't pick it up from the cap, it will fall off. And the distribution on the atomizer is pretty wide, gets the job done. Let's continue with the smell. So the first thing that you're gonna get when this fragrance opens up is this really bright herbal and aromatic presence. I do get a lot of juniper in here. So I'm typically not a fan of juniper berry, but something about this fragrance really allows it to work where it kind of gives the fragrance like a gin and tonic vibe. And whenever you think of these really bright fizzy fragrances with that juniper edge, you're likely to be put in that mindset, especially if it's right around this time of the year. And I think it's one of the more refreshing beverages out there. So a lot of people are inclined to consume it, but it does have this sort of juniper, rosemary, aromatic opening that I think is really, really likable. And this one definitely stood out among the other Hermetica fragrances that I had an opportunity to try that day. Now, once you give it a chance to settle down that basil note really starts to come through. And I think it's the basil that is perhaps the most interesting component of this fragrance. You know, basil is one of these ingredients that we don't encounter too often. I think we're more likely to encounter other minty notes like eucalyptus or even peppermint, spearmint. But basil is one of these notes where you come across it every once in a blue moon. And whenever it's used in a fragrance, it can either, I think, destroy the composition or it can add a very unexpected yet pleasant twist. And I think that in this fragrance, it's doing the latter. So I really enjoyed that bright opening and the basil is certainly adding that element of freshness. And then there's also unquestionably something resinous lurking underneath. Now from the smell alone, it doesn't have any medicinal properties, which is a good thing, but it also lacks sweetness as well. So I wouldn't be inclined to say that there's labdanum in here. I'm certainly not picking up on any of that. I'm sure there's no vanilla in here. And if there is, it might be used in trace amounts where its inclusion in the fragrance and the overall effect that it gives off is negligible. But there is a resinous component that almost makes it quite foresty in nature. And it, it, it makes it a, a very sort of natural fragrance. I can imagine somebody who is into the great outdoors, somebody who likes hiking, somebody who likes camping, somebody who just likes exploring nature. This is the fragrance that they would be inclined to wear. Now, of course, it lacks that sort of cedarwood component that would make it like a lumberjack fragrance or something like that. But I think it smells quite pleasant. I like that, you know, it's not just 
minty and fizzy, but it has weight to it, right? So it doesn't just fizzle out after a couple hours, but that resinous base allows the fragrance to linger for many hours on end. And I just think it's very easy to wear. And if there's one season in which this one uh, should be worn or could be worn, I should say, these are just recommendations, by the way, I think spring is the best season. I think for summer, that resinous base might be a little bit too heavy. And I think for winter, it has too many of those volatile top notes that perhaps you might be looking for something a little bit more dense. In that case, you might want to wear like Vertical Oud or some of the other offerings from this brand. But um, at the end of the day, like I'm really happy that I purchased this one. Like I said earlier, I'm not the biggest fan of Juniper as it's used in many fragrances. And that's because I find that it has a rather sharp, abrasive and astringent smell. Is any of that kind of happening in this fragrance? Yeah, admittedly so it is. But I think you also have a lot of these other agreeable elements in there that are, I think kind of tone down the fragrance. I should also mention that there's a note of cardamom in here and I can kind of pick up on it if I'm looking for it, but if you didn't mention it, I would miss it. And so it's not one of these, you know, landmark uh, notes that really stood out or anything like that. It's in there, but it's not in there, you know, like its inclusion in there isn't the strongest. If you're looking for like a cardamom heavy scent, of course, a lot of people on the designer side talk about La Nuit de Lomb by Yves Saint Laurent, and then also Cafe V by Olympic Orchids, I think is like a really strong cardamom fragrance, kind of overwhelming in that sense. But as far as we're concerned with this one, it's aromatic, it's a little bit spicy, it's certainly minty, a little resinous, but overall very likable, very easy to pull off in the springtime. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I do find this fragrance to be unique. It's interesting because I was thinking about other mint-driven fragrances that I have in my collection. And again, I don't believe there's any mint in this fragrance, but I think the basil sort of just gives off that vibe. But when I compare it to other mint fragrances that I've encountered, like 1861 Renaissance by Zerzhoff or Aqua Decima by Eau de Tali or Cartier Roadster or Montfresh or any number of other fragrances that I've tried. This one is not as fresh. It's a little bit more bitter. It's a little bit more astringent. And I think that it's that sort of bitter edge that makes it likable, right? And it, it, it turns it into one of these fragrances that intrigue you, they pique your interest. And it's like, okay, I'm not looking for something that is ultra fresh and ultra vibrant. Let me look for something that has a bit of a bitter quality to it as well. And I think it really satisfies that. Now, in terms of the overall smell, I don't think it's going to be as appealing as like a Montfresh or um, an 1861 Renaissance. I think this one has a bit of a darker edge to it. So that's why I would always recommend, you know, go out there and sample it for yourself. I'm not necessarily recommending that you go out there and blind buy anything. I never advocate blind buys, but uh, definitely try it out. I think this one, it's more on the like side of the meter, but I think that there will be some people that might find it to be just a little bit too strong, a little bit too astringent. Longevity on this one was pretty good. I got about six hours given the composition. I think that's pretty good. Projection was great for the first two hours of application. And I do think it's because of all these aromatic ingredients. And Inevitably, there is a little bit of citrus in there, although it's not listed in the note breakdown of this molecular fragrance, but I'm definitely picking up on a little bit of citrus in there as well. So two hours projection I thought was pretty decent given the fragrance itself, the way that it's constructed, the notes included therein, but also the concentration. Versatility on this one, very good. I just think that this one is best worn like in the spring and maybe in the fall when it's not super warm, it's still a little bit chilly outside. I could see myself wearing this in the summer, but I just feel like there are other, you know, more citrus driven fragrances that I'd be more likely to reach for in the summer as opposed to this fragrance. And then winter time, I would totally just leave it on my shelf, wait a few months to pull it back out again. I think anybody of any age can wear this one. And I do think that this is a unisex fragrance. Yes, perhaps there's something that really stands out about the way that it smells that I can see this one being worn on a formal level. But I also think it gives off a casual vibe, especially if you can find it for a really good deal. 
The presentation on it, I think is also pretty cool. I think it would have been a really cool idea if Hermetica had a different color for each bottle. This would also make it easier for consumers to identify which one is which, but perhaps that's something to keep in mind for like a limited edition release in the future or something like that. But I do like the presentation, very different, not something that has been done before. So my final verdict on this fragrance is I'm really enjoying this fragrance. I don't know if it's 100% a love for me. I really do enjoy it and every time that I wear it, I enjoy the fact that I sprayed it on, but it's also one of these fragrances where I kind of feel like I have to be in the mood to wear it. So it's not the kind of fragrance that um, I crave to wear every single day, but when I do catch a glimpse of it on my shelf and I'm like, oh, I haven't worn that for two weeks, whenever I do wear it, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I wore this one today. So, you know, go out there, try it for yourself. Maybe you'll see what I mean. Maybe you'll get a similar vibe from what my descriptions in this video have been. And I'm hoping that once you do have an opportunity to try it, you reverse back to this video you leave a comment down below because I'm always a fan of the interaction and I do read every single comment that is left on my channel so thank you so much for the interaction and thank you for watching so there you have it ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for tuning in that was my uh, quick review of Green Lion by Hermetica if you own or have tried this fragrance I would love to know what you think please leave a comment down below also please let me know do you have a favorite Hermetica fragrance I'm always curious to know what my subscribers are really liking and what they're into I know oftentimes I will look in the Facebook groups for recommendations. If there's a fragrance that is being talked about on lot, a lot, I will make it a point to purchase that fragrance for myself because I see that there's genuine interest uh, from my subscribers. But thanks again for watching. Again, if you did take value from this video, I would love it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click that red button in the corner. And this way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it'll get delivered straight to your feed and you'll never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads and of course that includes fragrance reviews just like this giveaways unboxing special guests interviews and a whole lot more also make sure you enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon thanks again for watching love you all we'll see you soon bye